So Germany is facing an energy crisis and this price shock might lead to deindustrialization. So we know that Europe is still suffering from high gas prices and in a shocking report, we now have the figures of how badly the German industry is really hurting. According to Alliance, German industries are set to pay 40% more for energy in 2023 than in 2021. And this isn't good news, especially when we are all moving towards a global recession. Now, back last year, we had Yasmin Fahimi, the head of Germany's trade union, warning of a collapse of their industries. Some companies are on the edge. This risks a domino effect, which could lead to the deindustrialization of Germany, which would be a catastrophe. And the story actually gets worse. A German stakeholder bank mentioned how Germany faces an era of declining prosperity. And I want us to realize that war is expensive and painful, and not just for Ukraine or Russia. Europe might actually be the biggest loser, especially when it comes to the future of their industries. Now, without cheap energy, two things happen. One, your manufacturing cost starts to soar and this will compound over time. And two, you are less competitive to the world, right? Especially when margins actually matter. You are competing against China, America, South Korea, Japan. All of them are also manufacturing giants and whatever business you lose is going to go to them. Even the IMF has packed Germany's GDP growth at 0.1% in 2023, which is even worse than Russia's economy, which is expected to grow by 0.3%. In fact, Germany's Q4 GDP was negative 0.2%, which puts us one quarter away from an official recession. So the alarm bells are really sounding here, but we quickly understand that Germany is trapped. There's no easy way out of this mess. Now the Nord Stream pipelines, they are offline and they have embargoed themselves against cheap Russian gas. So the Germans are at the risk of another supply crunch, especially with China reopening. But let's try and quantify just how leveraged Germany was on cheap Russian energy. Now back in 2022, Zoltan Posa of Credit Suisse revealed just how dependent the German economy was on Russian gas to actually power their export-driven economy. We can see that $20 billion of Russian gas were driving almost $2 trillion of German manufacturing value, right? That is some incredible leverage. And that's why when cheap energy is gone, Germany's operating margins are going to be hammered for years to come. According to Alliance, prices are going to hit corporate profits by up to 1.5%, and this is going to lead to lower investment and cost Germany around 25 billion euros worth, right? And this situation is just going to get worse. At a 1.5% drop in profits doesn't really sound like a lot, but realize that Germany imposed a price cap for companies and households worth 100 billion euros. So they're actually absorbing the crash in profits for now, and this can't go on forever. For 25,000 large industrial consumers, the German government is setting prices at only 7 cents per kilowatt hour on 70% of their gas consumption in 2021, and this will last until 2024. That is a very heavy subsidy which is going to boomerang back at the taxpayer. You can delay the inevitable, but someone will have to pay for all these price controls. But here's the thing. Higher energy prices generate higher inflation, right? And this could force the ECB to once again hike rates, which is very dangerous. And these higher rates is going to make the cost of borrowing extremely expensive, which could collapse any leverage in the system. And I want to remember a phrase from Putin in his speech last year. He mentioned how the economy of imaginary wealth is being inevitably replaced by the economy of real and hard assets. As Alfonso points out, sticky inflation from higher energy prices will cause rates to go up, which will inflict pain on hyper-financialized economies like Germany. And this is the pressures that is building under the surface, right? Germany is spending a lot of money to absorb the higher energy bills and it's a really scary amount. The EU has spent an insane 800 billion euros and that's almost a trillion to shield households and companies from the energy crisis, right? But if we zoom in on Germany, we can see their spending is truly extreme. They have allocated almost 270 billion euros, which is over 7% of their entire GDP to subsidize the country, right? That is a huge amount of money just to pay the electric bill. And the spending tells us that Germany is really getting pounded by the energy crisis. If the German government didn't absorb the pain, Germany would already be on the path of industrial collapse. But the data gets worse, guys. 270 billion is only the tip of the iceberg. And in order to raise money to pay for this, Germany has to get deeper into debt. Now, the German government plans to issue a record amount of debt to counter this energy crisis, which is even higher than the 2020 lockdowns or the 08 financial collapse. 
Now, we're talking about 539 billion euros in a high interest rate environment. And the problem with high debt is how it will reduce business investment down the road and slow down economic growth, right? You won't have the money for public works, infrastructure, or R&D. You'll be used to service the debt payments. It is a self-perpetuating doom cycle that fuels continued inflation in the years to come, right? Now, if we look at the German bond yields, we can see how much of a disaster this debt balloon is going to become. Now, the 10-year bond is yielding around 2.4% which seems low compared to the US 10-year treasury, which is around 3.7%. But just a year back, German bond yields on the 10-year were actually negative 0.3%. People were actually paying the German government to lend it money, but things have truly reversed. So Germany's cost of financing has exploded upwards across the board, right? And this essentially is a credit crunch for both the government and the German industry. And that's why we are seeing investment drawdowns happen across Germany and this will lead to job losses. We have half of chemical firms planning investment cuts because energy costs are just too high. And now we have the American car maker Ford cutting away 2,300 jobs in Germany because profits are dropping thanks to rising costs. It's the hardest hit country in the entire Eurozone. So even if Germany isn't deindustrializing, their industries are starting to stagnate. But let's talk about the biggest winners, right? This energy crisis is a zero-sum game. So whatever Germany is losing in production capacity, other countries, they are absorbing it. And according to the report, the United States is one of the winners in this energy crisis. And it's because they are the biggest natural gas producer in the world, coming in at 23% of global production. So in a sense, American industries, they are shielded from rising energy costs compared to Germany, right? Their industries have other problems, but energy is not one of them. Plus, they can also sell overpriced LNG to Europe. At one point, gas prices in Europe were 10 times higher than in the United States. So American energy exporters were really raking it in, right? Just take a look at the insane spike in European gas prices compared to the American prices. So it makes perfect sense to liquefy your gas and then ship it to the Eurozone. Remember that Germany and the EU in general are cut away from Russian gas, so they only have a few outlets left and that includes Norway and the United States. And that's why American industries will come out ahead of German manufacturing. But the biggest winners are India and China. And I think this should be ultra obvious to anyone who has been following the drama in the energy markets, right? Because of the oil sanctions on Russia, Putin is selling his oil at tremendous discounts to China and India. And there are reports that this discount is as deep as 40%. So let's sit back and really just think about it, right? Germany is suffering 40% higher energy costs, while China and India are enjoying 40% cheaper energy, right? That is a huge operating margin gap that's only going to compound month after month, year after year. And according to Alliance, we can see that Germany is slowly losing their price competitiveness over the years against China, which has improved dramatically. Basically, it's much cheaper to make stuff in China versus Germany and the West in general. And I think we can understand how important cheap oil and gas are. Ever since the start of the conflict, China has been enjoying cheap Russian energy and we can see this incredible drop in manufacturing costs in China in 2022. And things are going to get worse as China begins to reopen their economy. The problem Germany faces now is having to source energy from the international markets at a higher price. Now, because Russian energy is being absorbed by Asia, the price of the remaining supply will naturally increase and there are still two wild cards left floating around. Now, the first is Russia's oil production cuts and the second is China's reopening. Now, the production cuts are pretty straightforward, right? If Russia cuts supply deep enough, the demand for energy could spill over to the gas markets and spike up gas prices as well. But China's reopening is the biggest issue for German industries now, if the reopening goes smoothly, Germany is in trouble. We have Goldman Sachs estimating that Brent crude could rise by $15 per barrel if Chinese oil demand recovers by just 1 million barrels per day. And here's the crazy part. China won't be paying the market price. They can get discounted barrels from Russia. It'll be Germany who will be paying more. This is why we keep saying that the oil markets is splitting the two. One price for the East and another price for the West, courtesy of the energy sanctions and the price caps. However, Germany is trapped because there are signs that they are trying to move away from China. They are making the age-old mistake of trying to mix politics with business. 
We have Germany's finance minister saying that their trade dependency on China is dangerous. He wants to reduce Chinese dependence, saying in a tweet that how they need to learn from the experiences with Russia and how Germany needs to rely on more free trade with value partners, right? Basically, he's on board with the idea of decoupling with China and trading more with their Western allies. And I don't think there's a clearer sign that deglobalization is real and it's only accelerating. But if you're a German manufacturer, this should freak you out, right? Because whether you like it or not, China's consumer class is rising and they are also still the world's factory. Now, in fact, China is still Germany's biggest trading partner for seven years straight, enjoying almost 300 billion euros in trade. So if you move away from China, you might cut yourself away from a huge consumer base and your import costs could also rise. Now, Germany is working on a strategy to exclude using suppliers from authoritarian states and imposing stricter requirements for German firms dealing with China. And if this goes through, manufacturing costs might skyrocket and inflict more pain on German industries. So things are looking rather risky in Germany right now. The DAX is looking strong, but there are a ton of headwinds coming for Germany. Now, we're talking about mounting energy costs and a potential move away from cheap Chinese raw materials. Plus, we also have Germany incurring a huge amount of debt at a high interest rate that they have to pay back. You can't subsidize energy costs forever. You are just trading short-term pain for longer-term inflation. Now, inflation in Germany has slowed down to 9.2% in January, but that is still extremely high for a developed country. And that is after all the energy subsidies, which means German consumers are still getting squeezed and their purchasing power is evaporating. And that's why German industries today are truly suffering. And if I had to put my money somewhere, it wouldn't be in Europe. Cheap energy is everything and unfortunately, Germany has the short end of the stick. So let me know what you think. How bad is the situation in Germany? Are German industries in trouble or are the fears just overblown? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.